Welcome to our professional highlight series. Today we will be joined by a professional and if you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Mariam Van Barchen and I'm a behavioral scientist. And can you tell us more about what you do and how you got started? I have a non-traditional career path in, in some way. Um, I've started in academia. So the goal was always research in academia. So from psychology undergraduate degree to a PhD program at Stanford Business School. So the goal was to be an academic. Um, but midway through as I was completing my master's, um, I realized that there was a really strong pull from industry, industry in this case being Silicon Valley and, and the startup scene. So I started to explore what I can do in terms of applying my insights and my education in that domain. So there was a very big pivot for me to leave the PhD program and start pursuing behavioral science in an applied context. And with that, what analysis tools do you use and what would you recommend? So if you're going to the data science side, just the processing of the data, I work in R because that's, that's what we learned in graduate school. So I stick to that. But I know in industry, more people use Python. So I wouldn't have a strong recommendation for either um, whatever you're familiar with. I also use Excel for more quick and dirty analyses and stuff like that. Is there a really important trait that exists that you should have to be a behavioral scientist? First and foremost, and above all, it's empathy. I know that's not a, a, a word that many people expect to come out of science, uh, but no, really empathy, I would say, is, is the first one. Being able to walk in somebody's shoes and being able to understand how they feel and what their reality is, and what their pain points are, is the fundamental way to, to start that process. Um, I would say as you're doing that, the goal of a scientist is to remain objective, right? So empathy does not mean you're completely immersed in, in that with your own personal sort of um, background, but you're objectively there and you're trying to place yourself in their shoes as much as possible. So that's first. I think second is listening, which is a good skill to have generally in life. Everything you do, just listen more, listen more. Um, if you pay attention, people are communicating. And even when they're not communicating and don't know what's in their best interest, or they don't understand their motivations or can't articulate them, listening also means observing. So trying to be aware of, of all the factors that are contributing to that person's behavior. Well, how do you balance the soft skills and hard skills when it comes to analysis? The analytics are critical, obviously, right? But the evidence-based decision-making means you're taking into evidence, you're processing, you're analyzing. So, so we know all that, but then the soft skills come in when you have to communicate that with, with the rest of your team. Right? The, the research means nothing if the organization does not buy into it and does not act on it. So one of the most important roles of a user researcher or behavioral scientist is to bring everyone else on board which means tell the story in a way where they can empathize with the user and understand the context and what's going on. Communicate effectively. Um, don't use jargon. I think in academia, we were, I was really used to this idea of like all the big words you know, use them, these constructs, these theory names, et cetera. But what you realize is that's not a sign of being smart. In, in industry, a sign of being smart is being able to communicate in a way where everyone in your audience, regardless of their expertise, understands your message. What is a question you wished we would have asked you? Um, I think I'll go back to my work in Armenia and, and what I've been doing there. Um, so I'm actually still continuing to, and uh, Armenian government, the high tech ministry, and AGBU, Silicon Valley, are starting a new joint uh, project called the Armenian Virtual Bridge, where we bring uh, founders from Armenia to Silicon Valley, and they go through an acceleration program. So sort of like GovTech, except not just government-centric, but supported by the government. Um, and I'm really understanding this value of teaching entrepreneurs what it means to do customer discovery research, to do behavioral science research, to understand your users. Um, and I love that we're doing this from the Armenian community here in the diaspora to engage the Armenian startup ecosystem in Armenia. We have so much untapped resources here, a lot of expertise in the Armenian community in Silicon Valley and all over the US. Um, and it's incredible for Armenia to be able to tap into that. 